Welcome to ADU Corner. Right now, we have coach of, of the MEAC football champion, South, Car South Carolina State University, Oliver Buddy Pugh. South Carolina State also won the Celebration Bowl. Bowl. Uh, coach Pugh is a four-time MEAC Coach of the Year winner, including co two, a 2021 Coach of the Year. Coach Pugh, welcome to the urban sports scene. Well, thanks, guys, for having me. Thanks for being on. So first off, Ray and I, we all like to start off with an easy softball question. All and right. since we we all we both love homecomings, I want to know what's up with South Carolina State's homecoming. Well, how would you judge it? <laughs> well, I judge it as one of the better ones. Now it's got something to do with who you're playing that sure. week too. Now our folk here go get a little spot. We have big crowds every week, so it's not like going to Howard or Morgan. You know, some of those places where they don't have very big crowds, you know, from time to time. And it's having me show up here. It's a pretty good size. It's a pretty good size uh, show. And then, you know, in a case where, you know, if we're playing somebody that's kind of a, a funky kind of team, it might not be as much. But at the same time, you know, it's homecoming. It's, it's the same kind of stuff. There's all kind of festivities going on during the entire week. You know, our students got a rock and roll and good time having happening. And, uh, you know, they have a great time that way. I have to encourage, you know, our guys to maybe do a little something earlier in the week from that point on. You know, I try to see if I can make them understand that, you know, most of that stuff is not for us. You know, it's for them. It's for the it's for the rest of the folk in the university that way. So hopefully we can get ourselves to the point where we can be ready to play on Saturday. I love it. I love it. <laughs> how, how is the South Carolina State marching band? It's good. Uh, uh -huh. Not we were probably the best marching band, you know, in our league there for a while. Uh, we've now uh, kind of taken a step back a little bit. Uh, our numbers aren't quite what they were back, I guess, maybe five, six, seven years ago. But uh, we're getting back to that point again now. So the marching one-on-one -on -one can hold its own, you know, in most cases. Okay. So we're gonna now we're gonna now we're gonna get some ser some serious stuff now. Now we're gonna get serious. So, Hold on, I didn't, I didn't get a chance. Right, to ask oh, a I'm sorry, Ray. I'm sorry. I got a homecoming question real quick. I, I, I just want to ask, ask, ask Coach Pugh, what's the food like? I heard the barbecue was pretty good down at South Carolina State. Well, if you like mustard made barbecue, now we're not a, you know, a wet, <laughs> uh, uh, ketchupy kind of barbecue, but at the same time, and and we're not a beef brisket. We are pork barbecue people. So. <laughs> <laughs> and we like ribs and. And and uh, and chop barbecue that kind of stuff, pork, pork sandwiches that kind of stuff. So, but it's good. And uh, as barbecue goes, we do everything, you know, chicken, you know, pork chops, you know, sausages, deer <laughs> sausage, you name it. You can, you can find it all in the uh, in the tailgate areas around here. See, okay. I was this close to going to South Carolina State. So <laughs> I, mean, I got accepted I was, to South Carolina State. I was, too. I was, I was I in the freshman. Too. I was in the freshman book. But <laughs> <laughs> right. It's called out of state fees, my brother. So yeah, exactly. That's what happened to me too. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what happened to Tell me. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. Oh, so coach, uh, I mentioned that you won the celebration bowl, but you defeated Jackson State University 31 to 10. Uh, what was the vibe going into that game? Well, it was mostly Jackson. Uh, those guys were, you know, hot as a firecracker. They won about, you know, eight or nine ball games in a row. They just lost a game to uh to one of the directional Louisiana schools down there, maybe about game seven or eight, but they hadn't lost any other game, so they were ten and one. And you know they were really as 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 good looking football teams I've seen in a good while uh -huh. in HBCUs. But now they also were a very uh, uh, well. They took advantage of all of the mistakes that people were making against them. So they uh -huh. took you know they took the to uh, uh, to a certain level to a high level. You know the fact that they were. Uh, take advantage of other people's mistakes. So we th we thought that if we got in there and made them earn everything they had to get, as opposed to allowing them to, you know, have uh, kickoff returns and, and and interception returns and formal returns, you know, those kind of scores that you know that we could play with them. So, you know, it was one of those kind of deals where we got, we went in with a plan. We didn't want them to have anything and get any easy scores, and uh, we were able to accomplish that goal. That gave us an opportunity to win the football game. And it's, it's wild because I looked this up. You know, the SWAT gets a lot of attention. But when you look at the celebration, the celebration bowl, the MEAC has dominated the celebration bowl. Can you talk yeah. about that? And your team, your team has been one of the more dominant teams in the MEAC. Well, I think if you give us a couple of weeks to prepare, you know, our teams have a 
you know, a tendency to uh, to really get into you with a fine two comb and do a nice study, you know, on on all phases of the game. And so I think that gives us a certain advantage because they tend to want to, you know, maybe have a lot of big plays and and not necessarily do things in a kind of, you know, in more of a traditional way. They want to try to, you know, be flash in the pan and have a lot of big plays, that kind of stuff. If you take that kind of stuff away from them, you know, make them actually get into a detailed plan about, you know, how they compete against one of our teams. You know, I think we sometimes come out on the long end of the stick. So, Coach, I mentioned, you know, you've had such a, a big-time program in what you've done in the MEAC. Uh, you've won eight MEAC titles. What has what has been the key to your success? Well, I think just playing good, playing old hard-nosed, fundamental football, you know, having accountability in a way where our guys, you know, handle their business in a, in a, in a professional way. Uh, our teams traditionally have, uh, you know, gone on, going in and, uh, and, and not, not been very uh, of, uh, giving in a way where you, you know, give up a whole lot of easy scores and, and touchdowns, that kind of stuff. Our guys, you know, pay attention to their details. And uh, we generally have, you know, great defenses. Our defense is always the lead dog in our pack. And, you know, we do a, we do a nice job of not allowing, you know, a lot of uh, a high scoring kinds of games. So you don't see some of the kinds of scores that you see in some of the other leagues, you know, in the MAC because, you know, I think we are more defensive led kind of a league. Coach, so you, you played there at South Carolina State. Now, of course, the coach, he just uh, shared some of your credentials. What does it mean to you to have played and now, be coaching at an HBCU. Describe that for us. Well, um, you know, there's always a source of pride of having been a player in this league. Uh, I still look back on some of the days when we were um, uh, playing back in the in the early '70s. Uh, Coach Willie Jeffers, who was uh, my predecessor here, uh, came in here as a as you know as a hot and coming up and young whippersnapper kind of hot uh, college football coach doing his day. And uh, and got us going in a way where we started the tradition of winning championships here. We hadn't won a championship before he got here. And then from that point on, our tradition has been, you know, having great defenses and 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 continuously having, you know, uh, football teams that have been at the top of this league. So even the years that we don't win it, you know, we always around the top of the league. We always close to the top of the league. So, you know, I think that we just traditionally are going to be one of the better football teams in this league. Coach, do you want to share your thoughts on what you think the future of the league is? There's been a lot of discussion about where we're going because of just it only being how many football schools, is it eight football schools or six football schools in the MIAC right actually now? actually only six football it's schools six. right okay. now. Yeah, which is a little bit scary. But mm -hmm. at the same time, because we've got the Celebration Bowl as our championship, you know, sort of prize out there, you know, I think that kind of, you know, maybe four goals, the need for having more teams. The mm -hmm. six teams that we have, you know, we can all play each other. We got a clear-cut champion every year. You know, from that point, we can play a good – most of our teams can find games. We can play, you know, SWAC teams. We can play, you know, uh, 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 Big South teams in our, in our neck of the woods, uh, uh, a Southern Conference team. So there are enough championship subdivision kind of football teams around that we can find plenty of games to play, you know, to make a schedule out. So we don't necessarily have a problem getting a schedule that way. It's just that we only got six teams for our champion. And in our particular case, I like that better because, we, first of <laughs> all, I can play who I want to play in my non-conference schedule. We can have more guaranteed games. This coming year, we open up with UCF, Central Florida, and Orlando. Then game four, we play at South Carolina. That gives us mm. a chance to make somewhere close to a million bucks you know, as far as the guaranteed uh, uh, allotment is concerned. Then from there, you know, we can go out and we can play a &T, you know, who's now in the, uh, well, out there in the Big South now, but they're going to the, into the CAA in another year or so. And then we can also, we also play uh, Bethune-Cookman and, and FAMU who are, you know, now in the SWAC. So mm -hmm. it gives us a chance to dibble and dabble, you know, around where we want to play our non-conference schedule. It gives us a chance to play some guaranteed games we can do all the different kinds of things. We, plus, we still got time to get back to our league and play a conference schedule. So as of right now, yes, I, I'd like for us to have another team or two, but I like having the the uh, availability of a schedule where we can go out and play all these different kinds of teams. 
Look, season's not too far away. So how, how not too far away? Now we're getting there. How 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 are you liking your team going into the season? Well, we returned most of the team from last year, and uh, you know, anytime you return your quarterback and wide receivers, you got some some a couple of defensive linemen that we can get after pretty good. Our linebacking core, we think, is solid. We we think we ought to be pretty good now. Whether or not we can, you know, keep everybody down on the farm, whether we can keep guys from getting the big head. And that kind of stuff, whether we can continue to academically, you know, do all the things we got to do to get all of our team back in place this coming fall is still to be determined. But as of right now, we had a great academic semester this past year. You know, our guys are getting ready to get back here in a little bit for summer school. We'll have almost all of our team in here for uh, uh, sprint, uh, summer workouts in another couple of weeks or so. From that point on, all we got to do is just continue to work hard and do things we do here to this at South Carolina State. We ought to be okay. Coach, you just you mentioned you, you're returning most of your most of your kids, but you're missing one big one. Got drafted in the league, DB, the Kobe Durant. He went to the LA Rams. As a coach, how proud are how proud are you? Well, I'm extremely proud of the Kobe and uh, Zafia Kelly, uh, one of our other corners, is uh, with the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, you know, we've got another couple guys. We've got about six or seven guys in the league with different teams, and everybody knows Darius Leonard and Javon Hargraves, and those kind of stuff. Joe Thomas. You know, all those guys are ex South Carolina State players here recently. And, you know, we'll continue to have those kind of, you know, normals in the future, I think, uh, continue to go to the NFL that way. So, uh -huh. you know, I'm proud of those guys and looking forward to being able to see them on Sundays. But awesome. you know what? When the seasons go on, I don't I don't have a favorite team. I can't root for anybody <laughs> because I can't root against one of our guys, especially uh -huh. when they're playing against each other. So it's a lot of fun just to watch those guys <laughs> out there and remember when they were here. And hope that they can continue to be successful and eventually send some big bucks back to us at the university. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, coach, I, I love your excitement for your ex players. And again, you were a player back a few years ago. I, I'm not going to say when exactly, but you know, you still look good, of course. I want to talk a bit about how NFL players routinely will play at HBCUs in the past. So, are we getting back to that point now? Because I, I see your excitement, but it used to be such a regular occurrence. And I feel like we're getting there, but we still got some ways to go. What do you think? Well, we do. But now we've got to develop those guys as opposed to just get them ready made that way. Most mm -hmm. of the guys that we have here that are NFL guys came in here as kind of, you know, mystery guys of sorts. We didn't have a clue that they were that level of guy. And uh, Darius Leonard came in here. He was a you know, six foot, maybe a little bit over six one kind of 175, 180 pound guy who left a couple of years later, you know, 6'3 and 225, 230 pounds. So, mm -hmm. you know, we've got to be good at projecting what might be down the road a piece if we can continue to find those guys and then develop them as far as their, you know, strength and conditioning, as far as their ability, as far as their fundamental understanding of the game is concerned, then that's how we get those kind of guys as opposed to just going out and finding three stars and the four stars and the five stars in the high school. And those same guys sometimes end up being better players than those five stars were coming out of high school. So, you know, that's just what I'm, what we think our mission is. That's kind of how we do things as opposed to having, you know, those guys come in here, you know, as ready-made players that way. Awesome. So you mentioned Darius Leonard. You coached him, coaching one of the top linebackers. How does that help your recruiting? And what do you tell young prospects about playing football and just furthering their football dreams at an HBCU? Well, we tell them that we've got just as much an opportunity to be a part of the league as anybody else. And yes, sir. Uh, there's hardly never, ever a practice here that we don't have pro scouts here watching practice that way. And we practice at a time of the day where generally nobody else is practicing also. We practice at 6.30 in the morning. And uh, we go from 6.30 to about 8 in the mornings. And they can come here, watch us practice, hang around the office all day, watch tape, and then go and watch some of the other schools in the area that afternoon, which really works out as a convenience for them that way. So we don't, we, we never have, you know, an opportunity to, uh, you know, to say that our guys don't have a shot that way. So if you don't get a shot out of South Carolina State, it's not because you didn't get looked at. It's because you weren't good enough. Uh, Straight up. I know. Ain't that the truth? Hey, Coach, thanks for being on HBCU Quarter. Is there anything you would like to add? This has been a pleasure, to be honest with you. <laughs> no, I don't have anything except for the fact that I just enjoy, you know, seeing you young guys do sports talk kind of stuff. I'm a sports talk guy. So anytime I get a chance to talk to you guys, I enjoy it.
Thank you so much, Coach. We appreciate it. Thanks a bunch, guys. Appreciate you. All right, you have a blessed one. All right. <laughs>